Yes, Mr. Hodge. Commissioner, the next witness is Ms. Marion Messer. Yes. Now, can I ask you whether you would prefer to make an oath or make an affirmation? An oath. Swear the witness, please. I swear by Almighty God. I swear by Almighty God. That the evidence I shall give. That the evidence I shall give. Will be the truth. Will be the truth. The whole truth. The whole truth. And nothing but the truth. And nothing but the truth. Thank you very much. Do sit down. Yes, Mr. Hodge. Thank you, Commissioner. Ms. Messer, could you? I'm sorry, your full name is Marion, is it Angelica Messer? Yep. Thank you. It's Messiah. Pronounced Messiah. Oh, Messiah, I'm yep. sorry. And Without the A. Thank you. And Ms Messiah, you provided your address to the Royal Commission? Yes, I did. And what do you do for work? I work in a bakery at the moment. And you received a summons to attend and give evidence before the Royal Commission? Yes, I did. Do you have that summons there with you? Yes, I do. Attend to that summons, Commissioner. Uh, will be exhibit 3.16 will be the summons to Ms Massar. Yes. Thank you. And you also prepared a statement for the Royal Commission? Yes, I have. And it's dated the 14th of May 2018? Correct. And you read through your statement? Yes, I have. And are the contents true and correct to the best of yes, your knowledge? Yes, they are. Commissioner, I tender that statement. Exhibit 3.17, the statement of Ms Messiah. Now, in 2012, you were working as an office manager and bookkeeper at a local waste management company Correct. in Victoria. And before that, you'd had worked in a similar administrative role in a school. Yep. And I'm sorry, you might just need to speak up just because of the, we've had a few chair problems, so. Okay. <laughs> but you might just need to speak up so that we can hear you. And as at 2012, you owned your own home? Correct. And you also owned a residential investment property that you rented out? Yes, in Maribyrnong. And did you have any mortgages either over either, over either of those properties? On time? both. Okay. And which bank did you have those mortgages with? Commonwealth Bank. Okay. And before 2012, you'd separated from your husband? Correct. And you'd received the properties as part of the property settlement? Correct. I want to ask you about some events that took place in 2012 through until about 2014. And they involve, as you know, your brother and your then sister-in-law. I'm not going to use their names. They're subject to a non-publication direction. So I'm just going to refer to them as your brother and your sister-in-law. Fair enough. <clears throat> now, in 2012, you started looking into purchasing a business to run with your sister-in-law? Yes. And you'd known your sister-in-law for a long time before then? Probably about 20 years before that. And your brother was also interested in being part of the business? Yes, he was. But? More than a, as a silent, he, he would continue to work where he's working, but he would also be part of the business as well. It would mainly be you and your sister-in-law that would run the business? Yes. And why did you want to run your own business? We, well, personally, I wanted to have a change in life because I'd always been doing office work and bookkeeping, a change of direction, um, hopefully run a business, earn some money, retire early. And were you particularly interested in looking at buying a food franchise business? Food, yes. Not... Yeah, probably food more than anything else, yeah. All right. And were you interested in particular in a franchise? We didn't start off thinking about getting a franchise. It was just as it came up and what came up, we ended up going for a franchise. And was your sister-in-law working at the time? Yes, she was. And what was her job? 
she was also an office manager. All right, and your brother was self-employed? Yes. And what was his job? Mechanic. Mechanic, did you yeah. say? And were you all planning on working in the new business? Initially, we decided maybe one of us would work in there and the other would keep a full-time job. But when we actually inquired further and actually had to do training in Sydney for a month, we both decided that we wanted to both do the training and that keeping another job probably wasn't going to be feasible. And we also thought that if both of us were at the business full time, we might have a better chance of making a go of it quickly. And did any of you have any experience in running your own business? No, except my brother, because he ran his own. As a mechanic? Yeah, as a mechanic, yeah. And did you have any experience working in cafes? No. What about your sister-in-law, or former sister-in-law? She didn't have work experience in a cafe, but her parents did run a fish and chip shop when she was younger, which she did work in. And so then in 2012, you started looking into a few different food franchises? We started right? off looking at Subway. Um, we looked at Gloria Jeans, and then we came across Pie Face. All right. And, <clears throat> and what kind of business was Pie Face? Pie Face was coffee, pies, sausage rolls, and pastries, basically. And you and your sister-in-law decided you were interested in trying to buy a pie, pie, pie face franchise? Well, we decided that we would, yes. All right. And why were you interested in pie face? There was a lot of them in Sydney and there wasn't that many in Melbourne and we saw that a lot of people, a lot of people actually like pies and coffees so we thought we might give it a go. It appealed to us in that sense. And because there wasn't that many in Melbourne, we thought it might be feasible. All right. And you found a store to buy, is that right? Uh, well, Pie Face representatives actually found and told us about the store that was available. All right. Did you get in contact with Pie Face to look at finding a store? When we met with them, they, it was their responsibility to let you know what was available to purchase. All right. And they let you know that there was an existing Pie Face yep. store that was for sale? In Werribee Plaza. And... After you spoke to the pie face representative, did you speak to the existing owner of the store? No. You only dealt with the pie face Correct. franchise or and you incorporated a company for the purpose of purchasing and running the store? Yes, we did. And you had an accountant that helped with the incorporating the company? Yes. And was the accountant your accountant? No, it was my ex-business partner's accountant. You, your sister-in-law's accountant? Sister-in-law's. All right. And can you recall what the purchase price was for the Pie Face store? Three thirty. All right. And could you... You obviously needed to take out a loan in order to buy that? <coughs> yes, we did. And what you applied, as we know, ultimately to Westpac for a loan... Why did you apply to Westpac? When we were negotiating with Pie Face or talking to them, they said if you do get to purchase one of our businesses, you need to get loans with Westpac because they were accredited with them. So, this Pie Face was accredited yep. with Westpac. And had you ever previously banked with Westpac? No. Do you know whether your brother and sister-in-law had banked with Westpac? No. I think maybe they did, but I, was, I'm, I wasn't sure about that. All right. And you applied for a loan of about 300, or a bit more than $360,000? Yes. And that was, I think you've already pointed out, the purchase price was about $330,000. What was the extra amount for? It was for a bank guarantee and also a business overdraft. I think the business overdraft was 20,000. The bank guarantee um, was 19, but then they increased it to, I think, 24, just before. I want to just bring up a document that's not exhibited to your statement, which is WBC.404.001.0053.
And this should be, if we just turn over the page, this is the loan application form that was that you completed? Yes. And if we just go over the page again, can you just tell us whose handwriting is this? That's my sister-in-law's handwriting. Okay. But did you and she complete this application? Yes, we did. You completed it together? Yes, we did. All right. She's got neater handwriting than me. That's why she completed it. All right. And... The amount that's applied for there, you can see is, I hope it's clear enough, $362,500. Yep. All right. Commissioner, can I indicate, I, I can tender that document now, but it's part of an exhibit to, or it is an exhibit to Mr. Welsh's, another of Mr. Welsh's statements, and he's going to appear tomorrow. But so I'm content to just deal with it then. And, unless there's some pressing need to tender it now, leave it. No, thank you. That's why we left it out of Ms. Nurse's yeah. statement. All right. And if we go to the page dot zero zero five five, you see. Oh, good. We've got that up. And you see, there's something there that says "see the business plan." Can you see that about three quarters of the way down the page, Ms. Messer? It's in your sister-in-law's handwriting. Yep. Can you recall whether you prepared a business plan? I can't recall doing one. Okay. Doesn't mean we didn't, but I can't recall doing one. Okay. And then if we go to page dot zero zero five seven. So this explains the purpose of the loan is to purchase the Pi Face store. And then if we go to page dot zero zero six six, you provide a various information and your sister-in-law did about your assets and liabilities. Correct. And you have to provide Westpac with some other documents to support your application. Yep. And can you remember what kinds of documents? I think it was rental agreement for my property, probably a tax Lodgement, the most recent one. Other than that, I can't remember. And right. um, <coughs> I think, did you say, did you, a profit and loss <laughs> statement or something like that, or a projected profit and loss? Not that you can remember. No, I can't remember pro okay. producing that. And then, if we then talk about what just happened with your loans, what happened with the loans in relation to your home and investment property? Recently? No, no, at the time when you were borrowing the money from Westpac for the business. I had to console, I had to move over to Westpac to get the loans and they took, I had to be a guarantor for my investment property as part of the business loan. And why did you need to move your loans over to Westpac? As a requirement with Pyface, they said we had to bank with Westpac to get the business loan. Okay. And that's not something you recall Westpac having said to you? No. All right. And then you, so you moved the home loans over and you had, Westpac had mortgages registered over your home loans? Yes. And you also gave... Over the investment property. Over the investment yep. property and you also gave a guarantee of the borrowing? Yes. And before the loan was approved, you had to pay a deposit on the sale contract. Do you recall that? I think that was actually part of, in the loan for the, yeah, all right. part of the loan. We never used our own funds to do that. All right, it all came from, from, yeah, from Westpac. From the borrowings, yeah. All right. And do you recall that you got, I'll just list out a few things, a business loan, an overdraft, the bank undertaking, for the rental deposit and a business credit card? Yes. And what security did you have to give in support of the loans? Security was part of my property, um, my investment property. Right. That was the only security. And before... That was my security. 
I'm sorry, say that That again. was my security. Yes. And your sister-in-law and brother also gave had, some security? Yes, they had their own security on their house. And before you started the business, when you were looking into buying it, did you have a view as to the profitability of the business? We would hope that it would make success and we'd earn a lot of money, but yeah. But you looked at some figures that have been provided by PyFace yes. to you? By, yes. And you have, um, your sister-in-law had an accountant that was helping you? Yes. And what did the accountant say to you about it? He said the business, looking at the figures, were not, was not profitable at the moment, but with hard work, if you can increase sales, it could make a profit right. within a projected time of maybe up to three years, depending on how you increase the sales. And did you have a view at the time as to what sort of income you thought you and your sister-in-law would derive to begin with from the business? Well, we'd hoped we'd get about 50000 each, but that wasn't possible. Once you started operating yeah. the business? Yeah. Right. And? We knew in the beginning that we weren't going to um, get much of a, a salary. Now, once you got the loan, you went ahead and, as you've said, you purchased the pie phrase yes. store. And... Did the store start trading straight away after you'd purchased it? When we finished our training and actually took over the business from that day, yes, we started trading straight away. All right. And was there training full time in order to start? Yes. Training was compulsory for one month in Sydney. For one, or the franchisor, um, it was compulsory for one person because we were a partnership. It actually cost $10,000 for the training but we negotiated that we would both do the training for that price, which PyFace agreed to. And I assume then you, you'd resign from your existing yep. employment in order to start the training? Yep. And you started trading in about August of 2012? Yes. And how did the business go? If we earned $500 in a week, it was a miracle. That was at the beginning? Yeah. It was pretty woeful, to be quite honest. We were working 14 hours a day, running a business, and sales are not even $500. It was just ludicrous. And we sort of realised that the figures that the previous owner had presented were slightly exaggerated because he'd actually run the business down. So by the time we took it over there, the clientele just wasn't there. And over the course of the first 12 months that you owned the business, what happened to the performance? Well, we set ourselves goals and little... Uh, little achievements to aim to, like $500 a week just isn't going to cut it because we also had my daughter working there as well as manager if we weren't there. Um, so we set ourselves little goals to increase the, the sales and if we got it to $600 this week, we'd go out for dinner or something like that. So we, within the, after the first year, we increased the sales to over 1000 to $1,200 a week, which we're pretty proud of. So that was by about, what, mid-2013? Yeah, yeah. And what happened after that? Well, we continued to build up the business. We got a really good clientele. We worked hard with, because it was in Werribee Plaza, we worked hard with getting a lot of the retailers to come to the store, especially in the morning, coffees and things like that, which really increased the sales as well. Um, it was running well until Werribee Plaza started to have major renovations and through the plaza. And what happened once the major renovations started? They closed all the car parks bar one and it was a month before Christmas, which is the worst time of year to do that because you're waiting for Christmas sales and 
increase people in the shopping centre to make your business viable and actually make some money because that's actually the busiest time of the year between late November and January. Um, but people avoided Werribee Plaza with a passion. There's no parking. You can't get in and out of the place. Why shop there? People went elsewhere, High Point West, Woodland in um, Melton to do their shopping. And so sales decreased again. We had to still pay the same amount of rent to the owners of the plaza. There was no discount given. And it was in their agreement that they can do renovations whenever they they want to and you just got to put up with it. And what did you do with the running of the business to try to accommodate that, if anything? Well, we had a sank or swam, so we found out who the contractors were that were actually doing the construction of the, the plaza, the reconstruction, those two major companies. So we contacted the, the head people of that company, had a meeting and our normal training hours, we would be there from seven o'clock till whenever the plaza shuts, whether it be 5.30 on the weekday or Saturday or Sunday. Um, we negotiated with the, the head of the construction companies that we would start at five o'clock in the morning. We also negotiated that with the plaza as well. We would start at five o'clock in the morning so that we would be ready for the contractors to come in to get breakfast at six o'clock in the morning before they actually start work. And how did that work? That helped a great deal. If we didn't do that, we would have lost the business a lot earlier than that because it actually still it stabilised the our income. It wasn't as good as it had been, but at least we helped it to have some income. Otherwise, we we wouldn't have any. And when you say it wasn't as good as it sales had been, decreased. Yes, but did it ever? Had your income ever got up to the point where? you'd achieve the goal that you and your sister-in-law no. had of having no. $50,000 each no. out of the business? No. Right. And if, if it kept on being steady and without the construction work, the, pre the accountant, after the first year, we submitted profit and loss, and he said, look, the business is getting better. Um, it's still not going to... It's not still not profitable at the moment, but if you keep going as you are, within the next few years, you will make headways and it could be very profitable business. And in early 2014, you sought a payment plan from Westpac? Yeah. And what was the reason for that? Because the sales had decreased so much, we couldn't keep up the payments with... We had to contact even centre management to try to... I don't know, make a little of payments weekly rather than monthly just to help cash flow and get the bills paid because we were struggling. And what was Westpac's response to the request for a payment plan? They were fine to start with, yep. Yeah. They let you change the payments? Yep, yeah. we so paid weekly, yep. Yeah. Rather than monthly? Yep. Yeah. And did that help? For a short term. But the, the, the impact the construction had on the business, and not just our business, was all the businesses within the plaza, was just, it was very hard to come back from that. So we fell behind with a lot of... And you fell behind with your payment plan yeah. to Westpac? Yeah. And what happened then from Westpac? Then we think we were issued with a default notice. Was it just one? Mm, I think there was more than one, but I can't remember how many. Right. And did you keep... Obviously, you're no longer running the store now. No. When did you shut the store down? I think it was I don't, November 2015 or 14. Can't remember the exact date. Was it High Face actually went into voluntary receivership. So we... 
had a meeting with all the other franchisees in Victoria and there was an option that where we could actually get out of the lease with the plaza if we acted within a week and a half. We had like till the end of November to actually be right out of the store. Otherwise, we'd be up for the lease with the plaza as well for the next three years, which we couldn't afford. And so you shut the shop? Yes, we shut the shop. We took what we can over the weekend, coffee machine, ovens, whatever we purchased, but the actual fit out of the shop, which was actually ours, which we owned, um, we had to leave there because we were not allowed to, because it was a 25 square metre shop just in the food court. So you had barriers like benches around and that was actually fixed into the tile section of the food court. So if we wanted to take all that with us, we'd have to have it fixed by the Monday morning trade. It was not going to happen. Right, so you shut the shop and then at some point you applied for a hardship assistance yes. to Westpac? Yep. And was that because you couldn't make the monthly repayments? Yes. And... Because I wasn't working at the time either. It was Your sister-in-law? Yeah. And Westpac approved the hardship application? Yes. And they suspended your repayments for a period of time? Yes. And eventually that suspension came to an end? Yes. And had you found a job by then? I think I was working part-time, but I can't recall exactly when. And you had to start and start trying to make repayments again? Yes, I did. And, but you couldn't do it? No. And why was that? Wasn't working and what was I? I can't remember. If I had a job, it was only part-time anyway. And because I had the business loan, I had a credit card with Commonwealth Bank that I was paying off and also another Com uh, Westpac credit card that I was paying off, expenses that were put on there from the business when we went training in Sydney. So it was just too much. I wasn't, I had the income for my rental property, but that didn't cover all the expenses that I had. And so, you do you recall that you made a complaint to the Financial Ombudsman Service? Yes, I did. And do you recall what your complaint was? The complaint was... We actually met with um, a few of the franchisees from Melbourne. We got a number for somebody from Franchise that would actually represent us on our behalf to make a claim for FOS. And it was on the basis that we shouldn't have been given the loan to start with. To that is, Westpac shouldn't have given yes. you the loan. And what did the Financial Ombudsman Service find? They found in our favour that they shouldn't have. And we were offered, or the recommendation was that no interest would be paid to Westpac for the entirety of the business loan from start. So, so yep. Westpac had to refund the interest and yes. the bank charges? Yes. The and decrease part of the credit card. <coughs> I think it was the interest on the credit card, the business credit card as well. Right. But the principal amount that had been borrowed, that original $362 yes. or so thousand dollars was still due? Yes. And that had been borrowed by the company? Mm. Well, I suppose, yeah. And... 50% myself and 50% my sister-in-law, yes. Yes, but the company wasn't operating anymore? No. And... Did Westpac tell you or speak to you about whether you needed to repay the principal? Yeah. I mean, in any event, you knew you had to repay the principal. <laughs> so I have to repay it, yeah. And did you repay the principal? Yes, I did. And what did you do? I had to sell my investment property um, 
not just because of the business loan. I, I couldn't afford to pay anything and I had to, I was working full time. I actually had to quit my job because my mum got very ill. She got encephalitis of the brain and she was in hospital for three months. So I had to spend time with her so I couldn't work. And the the letters and the phone calls from everybody wanting money just got too much. So I decided to sell my investment property. Oh, the other thing was I was not entitled to Centrelink payments because I am the investment property. I couldn't access my super because even as a hardship case because I wasn't on Centrelink for six months. So basically I said to them, well, you're going to let me starve to death even though I've got no money. But um, I decided I had to sell my investment property just to breathe. My intention was to sell the investment property. I had half a business loan. My sister-in-law had half of the business loan. I sold my investment property for 750000 I owed $165,000 on my investment property and $330,000 on my home loan. My intention was to pay off the investment property, my home loan, and my share, $165,000 for my business loan to Westpac. I signed a form to release my property. And on that, it said that any surplus funds that I had, meaning the $165,000, would be put into my everyday savings account, which would have been about 170 something thousand dollars. I and mean, all my debts would have been paid off the credit cards, everything. In the last minute before they, Westpac actually would release my property the day before settlement was due on my property. I get a email saying, no, we are not going to do that. We are gonna take 100% owing on the business loan from the sale of your property. Which clearly shattered me because that was not all my debt. So we, unless you come up with a, some kind of proposal to pay off the balance. So my ex-sister-in-law sent a proposal to Westpac to pay them $150 a week. At $165,000, they obviously laughed at that and said no. So they refused and when settlement happened on my property, they took it all. Pay off all of the debt? Well, paid off all the business loan. And the $155 a week, did, did your sister then offer to pay that to you? No, she's paying me $120 a week. And you made a second complaint to Foz? Yes, I did. And what was the second complaint about? The, for the second complaint incorporated the issue about the bank taking 100% of the loan. But also, um, when I actually made the complaint to FOS from the date of lodgement, Westpac were notified that I had made a claim. I was receiving text messages from Westpac wanting money for the payment of my credit card on a weekly basis. And when you make a complaint to FOS, Westpac or the bank is supposed to stop contacting you? Correct, which FOS advised me of, which I knew from the first case. So when Westpac continually sent me text messages, I rang FOS and explained what was happening and they got onto them straight away. And they Foz, stopped after that. FOS got onto Westpac. Yeah. And, and then the text messages stopped. Yes, they did. And how did you find dealing with FOS? FOS? They're a really good organisation. They were very helpful. Um, nothing was too much work for them or too hard for them to do. They listened to everything and, you know, helpful in actually making the claim to start with, giving directions and things like that. And every time I had to ring somebody, they were 
They're wonderful, wonderful people. And Foz found against you on whether Westpac was entitled to take all of the money to pay down the yep. business loan, but they found for you in relation to the collection notes. Yeah. Right. Well, in the FOS recommendation, it said that Westpac were entitled to take that full money. Sorry, they, they were yeah. entitled to take that money. Yeah. yeah that's because the first thing. Because, yeah. But the second thing is they found against Westpac on the sending of the collection yeah. notices. And they did they make an order in your or direction in your favour? Yes, they did. And what was that? Westpac had to pay me um, a certain amount for each text that I received. It was six thousand seven hundred and fifty dollars for stress and inconvenience. They also closed my bank account, which they shouldn't have, which they were charged two hundred and fifty dollars for as well. And how did receiving the text messages and contacts? How did that affect you? It was overwhelming and just stressful. It's the worst time of my life. Um, I didn't want to go through it again, and I don't want to ever go through that again. It's not a nice feeling when I've always paid all my debts up front, bills were always paid, and to continually get phone calls from institutions about where's your payment, when you're going to make the payment, is just something that I'm not used to and was really hard. I had my kids paying my bills for me, paying my loans for me. That's not what a mother does. That's not what I do. That's not what I've done all my life. I worked hard to get where I was. It's gone. All of it's gone. I still owe money when I should be retired by now, but I still owe money. Commissioner, I don't have any further questions. Thank you, Mr Hodge. Yes, Ms Goldstein. This is Messiah. My name is Ms Neskovjian. I'm going to ask you some questions on behalf of Westpac. Yep. Thank you. Um, Mrs Messiah, you say in your witness statement that um, Pieface representatives made available to your accountant certain information of the former owners of the Pieface Werribee shop in the form of a profit and loss statement. Yep. And that your accountant provided the profit and loss figures to Westpac. an exhibit to Mr um, Welsh's statement which isn't in evidence yet but it should be uploaded. I ask where this is going Miss Niskovshin. If you don't want to answer that with the witness, the witness can leave the room. But to what uh, ultimate I, point is this going? I want to ask if um, Ms. Messiah recognises the document, if she discussed it with the accountant, if she understood that it was the document that was put forward to support the loan application. She might not know. Let it I all be assumed, just a moment. Let it be all assumed that those answers uh, flow in the way you would hope they flow. What follows from that? Um, the
uh, matters on which we wish to make submissions, depending on the findings that um, the commissioner, the council assisting, urge, urge the commission to make. Go on. Mrs. Messiah, do you recognise this document? I have seen the document. Yes. Is that a document that you discussed with the accountant? I can't recall, to be quite honest. I have seen it, whether or not I discussed it with the accountant, whether or not I discussed it with my sister, or I don't know, but I have seen the document. Did you have discussions with your accountant or, or did you leave that to your sister-in-law? I left most of the discussions with my sister-in-law. Did you understand from the accountant or the sister-in-law that these cash flow projections were put forward on behalf of Marjo, the company that you incorporated, to support the business loan application? I don't recall. Thank you. Um, you also asked some questions about the um, renovations at the shopping plaza, yeah. at the Werribee shopping plaza. And I just want to get um, the context correct. The car park that you said was closed around Christmas, that was Christmas 2013, is that correct? I'm not sure what year. Well, the renovations, didn't they start in early 2014? Yes. And then they continued for most of 2014? Yes. And they're what you described as major renovations? Yes. And um, I understood the effective evidence to be that it affected the, the foot traffic through the centre and therefore the number of customers and sales? Yep. Thank you. Was there also an issue in about mid-May to? 2014, where you had another cafe open next to your kiosk or near your kiosk, which also affected sales? Yes, it was Jamaica Blue. That lasted two weeks. And then it closed down, did it? No, no, they were still there, but the effect of them opening only lasted two weeks. Okay. A lot of our customers went there, but after two weeks they came back to us. And you mentioned the pie face going into voluntary administration in yep. late 2014. Prior to pie face going into voluntary administration, did pie face ever stop meeting its obligations to your kiosk under the franchise agreement? What does obligations mean to you? Well, the pie face weren't very of much assistance whatsoever. You get in there, you run your business, they tell you what you have to sell. There was no support, there was no marketing done by Pie Face. Did they provide you with advertising material? Yeah, a little on the front counter, yes. And yeah. they provided you with the pies and pastries and sausage rolls We had and to purchase like those, yes. yes. But they didn't ever stop doing that? No. Um, one final matter, um, Mrs Masai, you said that your you asked some questions by Mr Hodge about um, repaying the business loan. Yep. And you said that your sister, you asked whether or not your sister-in-law had made an offer to pay you back $155 a week. And I think you corrected that to say the amount's $120 a week. That's what she pays me now, yes. And so she's trying to repay you her share of the business yes. loan. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner. Yes. Mr Hodge. There's nothing further, <coughs> Commissioner. Could the witness be excused? Yes, thank you for coming, Ms. Massa. You're excused for further attendance. Thank you. 9.45 tomorrow. Thank you, Commissioner.